what's going on guys I am finally doing the review on the rock espresso machine this is a fully portable espresso machine it's a manual machine so you're pulling your shots by hand you're not using any kind of electricity for this um, the big deal with this is that it is portable that's the main selling point uh, above everything else is that you can take this thing anywhere you can make espresso in the middle of the woods you can make it on your roof make it in your basement wherever you want um, so I did a little teaser video uh, showing this in action but uh, it's finally time for the review. I've been using it for a long time now. It's been uh, quite a bit of time. At first, the first like week or whatever, I got it and I got busy with other stuff and I kind of put it aside. But then I, you know, took it back out, started using it, used it um, out and about in the woods, used it uh, all over the place, used it inside too. Just because it's a portable espresso machine doesn't mean you can't use it in your kitchen. Uh, it's not just for for camping and stuff like that. So anyway, here's what you get. You get this big tin for storage. You can use this tin for something else if you choose to put this in some kind of bag or pack. But uh, we're going to open it up and see what you get here. There is a piece of fitted foam. This keeps the whole thing from rattling. All right, so you might want to save this. If you're planning on keeping it in here for storage, do save this um, foam piece. All right, some stuff that I added to this, which you'll see in a second. I'll explain, I'll explain what comes with it and what I added. And I kept all the paperwork in here so you guys can uh, see what you're going to get. This has your uh, couple of cautions. All right, some things you should know about it. 10 year guarantee on this. Just uh, a little quick uh, instructions on how to use it. I do recommend watching a video, it makes it a lot easier. And then further uh, instructions, expert tips, all kinds of stuff in here that helps you kind of fine tune uh, pulling those espresso shots, depending on you know what you like. So let me get this paperwork out of the way here. And the container, you can see as a container, there is foam in the bottom. So again, having this bottom piece and the top piece is crucial for storing it in here because it keeps it from rattling. If you take these foam pieces out, it's just going to be metal rattling on metal. It's going to maybe even damage the machine. So again, if you're keeping this for storage, it's very important to keep that stuff. All right, so here's the actual espresso machine. All right, it's all metal except for the water reservoir is a hard plastic. Had no problems so far, although I never bumped it really hard. I'm sure if this took a really good impact, it would probably crack or break. So obviously be careful of that. The whole thing is very durable and sturdy. The only weak spot, of course, is this plastic water reservoir, all right? It's semi-protected, but it is exposed here on both sides, so just be careful not to... If you drop this on a rock or something and it broke, it would make the, the machine useless, all right? So something to keep in mind there. Uh, very simple mechanism here. You have a double handle, all right? Once you pour your water in there, I'll, I'll go through the process and we'll make a shot here together, but you pull this up, you let the, the water kind of pre-soak your beans, or your grinds, rather, and then you, you know, use pressure to uh, forcefully pull a shot of espresso. All right, this weighs 6.7 pounds. All right, so it's kind of hefty. It's not something you're gonna hike, you know, 10 miles with. Uh, it's definitely for, you know, campsites and picnics and, and barbecues and stuff like that. It is extremely portable, but again, not something you're gonna carry way out in the woods, nor I think is it really a necessity for that. They actually make, you know, little handheld ones if you're really gonna be trekking and, and you really feel like <laughs> In the middle of nowhere, you want a cup of espresso or a shot of espresso. Um, you can certainly do that, but that's not what this machine is for. 12.2 um, inches by 10.6 inches by 7.9 inches. All right, so those are the diameter of the machine. So accessories you get with this, of course, your portafilter. All right, this is what you're putting your grinds in. All right, you're gonna get a scoop, which also works as your tamper. Okay same diameter so you can use this to tamp down your grinds and the last thing here is your frother all right now I've only used this a couple times because most of the time when I'm having espresso I just have espresso but what's nice is they give you a manual pump here so if you want to make espresso based drinks such as like lattes um, you know anything that you're going to be needing to to uh, froth milk with this little pump does it all right you can see there's two layers of holes in this plastic, okay? So uh, you're literally just pumping it back and forth and you're creating air. You're aerating the milk, making it frothy. This works extremely well, all right? It is a pain in the butt to clean. So if you're really into all the, the, the froth or milk-based uh, drinks, such as cappuccinos and lattes and things of that nature, um, this does work. It's just, I again, dealing with milk and cream, uh, 
you know you should clean it right away so in like a, a quote-unquote camp situation not the best idea unless you have more water um, to be able to clean that right away you don't want milk or cream sitting obviously for a long duration of time works perfectly just um, a little messy that's all but anyway I don't use that all that much I just like straight uh, cappuccino so things that I added into this kit and by the way when this is in the tin this whole void here is the space that I put everything in a bag all right so it fits in there nice and, and snug that's the cavity you have to work with once the foam is in the uh, package and everything all right so I put everything in this bag and the thing that I add to it of course when I'm about to use it I will grind some fresh beans all right so I want to talk about the porter filter a little bit here's the porter filter you can see we have a nice plastic handle it's a very heavy duty thick uh, stainless steel here we have a basket okay this is what our grinds are going into and it's a filter all right filter basket you can um, buy aftermarket ones with different size holes and all kinds of stuff to really fine-tune your shots of espresso but this is just a basic basket that's gonna work just fine I don't get too fancy with this stuff so this works perfectly for my needs you can see there's two tabs on here and the bottom of the machine there's two openings, all right? So when you put this, the porter filter on, all right, once we put our, our grinds in here and pack it down or tamp it, you're gonna put this in on an angle and then turn it, okay? Those lips have to be behind that metal wall in order for it to work. You're gonna feel a uh, resistance, okay? And then once you get to the straight position, it's fine. If you don't put both tabs in, obviously it's just not going to hold, all right? You can see that there. So it's kind of natural, people who are used to, uh, using espresso machines, especially, you know, manual ones, um, they're used to just putting this up on an angle. You kind of, once you put it up there, just wiggle it until you feel it seat all the way, then just turn it. And once you have the uh, resistance, you know that it's in there and locked in. All right. So what we're going to do is get some of these grinds here. On an espresso machine, you do need an espresso grind, which is very, very fine. If you have a larger grind, it's not going to work properly. Um, so here's our scoop. I'm going to do is obviously just scoop some of this coffee put it right in here all right gonna get this nice and even a little bit more in all right and then when you're tamping down you're basically pushing down and twisting just a little bit and the one thing that I've noticed is that um, when I first started doing this it, it really it takes some some practice for sure you're not just gonna get this your first time uh, when I first started tamping, I tamped way too hard. There's a certain number of bar, which is, you know, measurement of pressure or, you know, how much force downward you have. Um, uh, you know, I'm not going to get too technical for, for most people. People who are really into espresso, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you know way more than I do. But for the average person, you're basically going to push down a little bit, don't push too hard, and turn. Okay, when you do that, it's going to make all your grinds flat and even. Lightly tap that to get the ones off the top and that's it all right so you put the porter filter up there lock it into place and now we are ready for some water so i'm going to go boil some water all right so a uh, real quick note is that you get this piece or attachment okay that goes to the porter filter basically there's going to be a hole straight in the bottom if you want to pull the shot with one hole you would just use it as is if you put this attachment on here the shot goes through both sides all right so it's basically coming out at two points this could be to fill up you know two different cups or for most people it's to basically have the um the espresso hit the sides of the cups okay this might help create more of a crema the crema is that layer of oil that sits on top it's very sought after it's literally a concentration of you know coffee bean oil all right there's tons and tons of flavor in there and highly sought after with any any espresso shot so for this purpose i'm just going to put this on here so you guys can see it just snaps on to the porter filter on the bottom. So we have um, the reservoir up here. So you have to pour water in. Now this takes a little bit of playing with. You can use regular boiling water if you really want to get specific on your shot and how it, it pulls and what it tastes like and blah, blah, blah. If you're an expert at this stuff, you're going to have a, a very specific temperature for your water. For me, uh, anything just above simmering is totally fine. I don't do like a roaring boil for this. Uh, I have done that before, but I find it tastes a little better. If the water's not quite as hot, it doesn't scold the coffee or burn it. So just above simmering is fine for me. You pour it directly into this reservoir on top. And what you want to do, it's going to fog up, so it might be hard to see. But the water level, you want to be just above that stainless steel line. All right, so as I pour it in, it fogs up. But you can clearly see that's where the water line is. Just raised where we can see it. All right. 
Move that out of the way. What you want to do is lift up on both these handles. When you lift up, it's going to allow all that water to drop down past this seal, okay, and into where our uh, porta filter is, where all of our grinds are. All right, so lift it all the way up. All right, this is the pre-soak. So right now our coffee grinds are getting wet. The water is sitting on top of it, but there's no pressure added yet. All right, I let it sit for just a second or two, and then I slowly start pushing down. All right, and hopefully on the bottom of your screen you can see that shot being pulled. All right, let me give you another angle here as I do this one more time. Could do this a couple times to use the rest of that water. So lift up. Again, push down. All right, you could do it a third time if you want, but it's not necessary. So it's that easy. So now I have my shot of espresso. So the one thing I've noticed with this is that uh, it makes a really good espresso shot, but I never really get a thick, rich crema. And once again, that crema is gonna be kind of a um, light to medium brown color, and it's gonna be a film you know, on the top layer of your uh, espresso or coffee. Um, it's just a concentration of oils. It adds a lot of flavor and stuff. So it's something that's that's pretty sought after. But, uh, you know, it's not always necessary. Uh, it, this pulls an awesome shot, and that's what I'm happy with. But it is worth mentioning if you're an espresso freak and you have to have a perfect crema, if that means something to you, then uh, I don't know if this machine is going to do that for you every time. I've, I've gotten it to, uh, to do that before, but it's not consistent. And that has to do with how much pressure is involved, all right? So it's human, the human element is there whether you're gonna create a crema or not. And that is a, an awesome shot of espresso. So the Rock, to me, is a really cool gadget. Uh, the price on these are $1.99. Now, if you're not into espresso or coffee and stuff like that, that's, uh, that's expensive. Who, who's gonna buy that, right? These things, uh, they, they sell like crazy. Uh, actually, in 2012, it made GQ's magazine for uh, best stuff, you know, in 2012 or something like that. It's also won different awards before. Uh, it's a very cool gadget, but to me, it's a kitchen gadget. This is something that is awesome, and you, you love the idea of it, but I think if you're gonna be buying something like this, make sure you're gonna use it. It's just like that cool, you know, uh, food processor. You know, how many people own food processors that have been sitting in your cabinet for, for a year without being used, you know? The idea is great, it serves a, a very good function and purpose, but make sure you're going to use it if you're going to spend the money on it. It's like anything else. I uh, got this because I do use this. I do use this quite frequently. When me and uh, Christina are out and we're doing like light camping or something or going up to my parents' house, um, if we're like somewhat traveling, we have this with us because we can have a nice uh, shot of espresso anywhere. Literally anywhere. All we need is uh, a source for hot water. So ideally this is going to be used for rv camping it's going to be used for for light camping you're not going to backpack with this it weighs too much it's too bulky it doesn't make sense it's not a necessity to have uh you know espresso when you're hiking um but you can use this in a household if you just don't want something plugged in if you have countertop uh limitations like most people do it's a great thing to throw on the countertop uh, when you want to use it and when you don't want to use it you store it in the tin the big bonus a lot of people like is that the tin's kind of decorative, you know, so you can leave it in the corner of your uh, your kitchen and it, it looks nice. It's not just another, you know, piece of machinery there. All right, so to recap on this machine and my thoughts after using it for a while. Um, number one, if you're going to get this machine, don't expect it to work perfectly the first time you use it. What I mean by that is that unless you're experienced with making espresso, um, it's good. There's a learning curve there. It's definitely going to take you a bunch of fails in the beginning in order to realize how to tamp properly How to use the machine properly. It's very straightforward. It's very easy to use and it's very simplistic But if you're new to espresso or just don't have uh, experience with a manual machine It will take time to learn it. I've been drinking espresso for years now, but I have an automatic machine I have a super automatic machine, so it does everything for me. I don't pull shots myself, you know? So this is a new experience for me, and it was very cool. It's very interesting. There's definitely a novelty to it. There's uh, an enjoyment of the process. It's like anything else, like, you know, smoking a cigar or a pipe or, you know, a lot of people's hobbies. It's, it's the process of getting ready to do something. It's the enjoyment of, you know, pulling a shot by hand. People who are really into espresso and coffees, they like to fine tune their coffees, okay? They buy specific beans, some of them roast their own beans, and you know they grind it themselves. It's the entire process is part of the allure to this. 
but the end result from this machine is a really really nice cup of espresso the only downside to this again is there's user error so because I'm not experienced um, heavily with pulling my own shots manually I can't form you know the perfect crema on this again crema being that thin brownish layer of film that's on top of the espresso shot that's just a concentration of uh, coffee bean oil it's tons and tons of flavor I love it I can get that perfectly in my machine because it's doing the right pressure for me um, so you know how fast how much pressure you're pushing down on this how you tamp your beans that all is going to make a difference all right so there is a learning curve something to note uh, as far as the price 200 bucks 200 bucks for an espresso machine is a drop in the bucket espresso machines start five six hundred dollars you know for automatic machines if you go into a barista and they have that machine there with three four you know um porta filters hanging off the end those things can be fifteen thirty thousand dollars so there's big money in coffee two hundred dollars for an espresso machine is nothing um there are cheaper options out there but what this particular machine does for you is it gives you that advantage of portability i've never seen anything else except for there, there's like a handheld one where i think you um i don't know you crank it or, or you pump it or something for the pressure the things like this long it looks like a big can opener that is awesome for hiking too but it's not as you know consistent as something like this and i've seen plenty of people use those as well that's just for a different niche if you're going to be you know using this outside in your porch camping whatever that's the beauty of this too is that i think it's kind of marketed for you know outdoor situations but you don't have to use it outdoors you can never step outside you can keep this on your counter it's just another manual espresso machine so you don't have to worry about plugs or anything like that it, it has a really nice look to it you know if your house is kind of art deco it would go great on your counter stuff like that but uh, i happen to love this machine because i use it the biggest tip i can give to anyone with this particular one i know you know watching a video on anything can be exciting Ooh, I, I want that everyone wants everything they see on video but hear me out on this this is fantastic product if you're going to use it i consider this a kitchen gadget all right just like a food processor or a cool blender or whatever you saw on tv that you bought that's sitting in your cabinet for for you know two years it's a great product if you use it if you're going to spend 200 bucks on it use it twice and put it in your cabinet save your money for something more important if you are really into espresso and really into coffee and stuff like that and particularly if you're going to be outdoors and out and about this is a one of the best things you can buy all right i just want to talk briefly about the cleaning of this machine um it's really easy to clean after you pull your shot um, what you want to do is take the porta filter out of course you're going to dump out all of your you know wet grinds and wash your porta filter and then all you have to do is put another uh, load of water in here it doesn't matter if it's hot or not of course if you have leftover hot water it's better than you know room temperature or cold but pour another load of water in here and just cycle through lift it up and push it through the machine all right it's very very simple to do it's easy to clean uh, but again it because this is a portable unit because you're probably using this you know out somewhere where it's it's not convenient to uh, have a sink by you um, keep that in mind. You always want another water source to be able to clean out your porter filter and your machine when you're done. You don't want coffee sitting there. It's going to clog things up and uh, you know affect the taste of uh, future espresso. So that's pretty much it. That is the uh, my review anyway of the Rock Espresso Machine. I got this one from Whole Latte Love. I've gotten pretty much all my coffee stuff from them. They have some of the best prices that are for anything coffee related. In fact, I, I got a coffee grinder, an electric grinder that I'm, I'm using specifically because I got this machine. Um, and I might do a review on that in the future. But uh, awesome website, really good people. I've uh, talked to them before for customer service and just uh, just a really good company. So I'll always support them. But um, it's a really good machine and it's very, very versatile. That's what this has over other espresso machines because there's hundreds of them. Hundreds of, of espresso machines, lots of different styles, lots of different levels of, you know, uh, what you can do with it. This is just a pretty bare bones, basic machine, but its biggest selling point is that you can take it anywhere and it's not electric. So that's where its advantage lies. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the review. If you have these, you know, post comments down below your experiences with them. People love to read it. And, uh, and that's all. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon. Take care.